It had been a crazy several weeks for those first Christian disciples. They had experienced the life of Jesus of Nazareth for about three and a half years, but those last several weeks, they experienced his passion, yes, but his suffering and even his death and a traumatic and terrible one it was, it seemed. But then they experienced, still not quite knowing what to make of that wrenching loss and trauma, they experienced his resurrection. What in the world are we to make of that? He appeared, peace be unto you. And then he disappeared, he reappeared. He was with them for a while. Then he appeared again to other disciples. Many, many of his followers saw him in resurrection form for 40 days. And just as they were about to get used to it, he ascended back to heaven, sending them out on mission to continue what he had begun, losing him, it seemed, once again, yet believing his promise, staying in the city from Passover to Pentecost. And then we heard, read to us earlier, so well by Barbara, the beginning of the first Christian Pentecost on that Jewish Pentecost festival day when those disciples, the 120, were in the upper room, gathered and waiting and praying and trying to sort through and process all of these amazing ups and downs that they had had with their Lord in recent weeks. And I simply continue reading where she left off as, as we experience this morning or consider this morning what is really the first Christian sermon by the Apostle Peter. Then Peter stood up with the eleven and raised his voice and addressed the crowd, Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These men are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. I will pour out my spirit on all people, he said, and everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Men of Israel, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs, which God did among you through him, as you yourselves know. This man was handed over to you by God's set purpose and foreknowledge, and you, with the help of wicked men, put him to death by nailing him to the cross. But God raised him from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death, because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. Peter continues his sermon. Brothers, I can tell you confidently that the patriarch David died and was buried, and his tomb is here to this day. But he was a prophet and knew that God had promised him on oath that he would place one of his descendants on his throne. Seeing what was ahead, he spoke of the resurrection of the Christ. Then he was not a, that he was not abandoned to the grave, nor did his body see decay. God has raised this Jesus to life, and we are all witnesses of the fact. Exalted to the right hand of God, he has received from the Father, the promised Holy Spirit, and has poured out what you now see and hear. Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this, he continued. God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children, for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. With many other words he warned them, and he pleaded with them, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. 
Those who accepted his message were baptized, and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. The first Christian sermon on the first Christian Pentecost, on that glorious 50th day following the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. This morning, in response to the word and, and as an additional sharing of the word, we have the delight of, of having our guest speaker from the Gideon's Association, Gideon's International, to come and share with us. And afterwards, we'll have some moments where we recognize our high school graduates. So we, we look forward to responding to the word in these ways. I want to introduce you to our Gideon speaker this morning. His name is Al Smith of here in, from here in Montgomery. Al is married to Juanita. They have three children, Robert, Brian, and Alicia. Al is a graduate of Miles College in chemistry at the University of California in Berkeley, also in organic chemistry and in physiological optics at UAB. He has been for 39 years a radiation chemist with the Environmental Protection Agency here in Montgomery. He is a member at Vaughn Forest Baptist Church here in Montgomery and serves in a variety of ways as a servant and minister there in that church on the, greeter, the greeters team, the baptism team, the intercessory prayer team, and in other ways there at the church. Now, Jack Fredenberg is a very active Gideon here in our church, and I have been delighted, as Patty has as well, to join him and, and Toby and others uh, at the Gideon banquets with which they bless us once a year. And Jack Fredenberg handed me a handwritten note this morning. He says, Francis, and then he picture his handwriting. Francis, Al might not tell you that, but he's a top-notch Gideon. <laughs> he is the recent president and current vice president of the Montgomery Southeast Camp of Gideons. And also, Jack adds, one heck of a Christian. That's a wonderful introduction, isn't it? One heck of a Christian. Al, would you come and share with us the Word of God? And we thank you for being here. We look forward to what you have to share with us this morning. Thank you. Good morning, church. Good morning. Someone loves you, Martha Hawkins. Martha Hawkins is born the 10th of 12 children in Montgomery, Alabama. She was married at the age of 16. She was divorced at 23. She had four sons. She was in and out of bad re relationship with men, and she tried to commit suicide with overdose of pills. And she was admitted to the Grill Hospital in Montgomery, Alabama. And at that hospital, she found the Gideon Bible. In the Gideon Bible, if you noticed on here, it's the Holy Bible, it said B-I-B-L-E, basic instruction before leaving earth. She was saved with the Gideon Bible. And because she was a new creature, I thought about 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creature. The old has gone, the new has come. Someone loved Martha Hawkins. God loved her. Martha Hawkins became a successful businesswoman, and she owns Martha's Place on Atlanta Highway. So go out and get you some real soul food from Martha's Place. <laughs> the Gideon International is an association of born again Christian business and professional men. Our purpose is to bring men, women, children to the saving knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Today, we are in 194 countries in 90 different languages. We distribute Bibles in hotels, motels, hospitals, doctor's offices. Last year, every year, I guess, October, Columbus Day. We go to Auburn University, and this past October, we distributed 8,500 
Bibles to the students there. And it's by the grace of God, oh, last year we distributed 79 million scriptures in the world. Since 1908, we distributed 1.5 billion scriptures in the world. I thought about uh, Isaiah 5511. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the things for which I sent it. We all need Jesus. John 14, 6. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one come to the Father except through me. Mary Kay Beard. She was a small lady, 5'2". She was married. She was uh, on the FBI most wanted list. She was a safe cracker, bank robber. It finally caught up with her. And she got put in prison at Tuckwiler Hotel. I mean, Tuckwiler Prison. <laughs> <laughs> we, we distribute Bibles in hotels. I'm thinking hotel. <laughs> Tuckwiler uh, Prison in Wetumpka. And at that prison, she found the Gideon Bible. She kept kicking it under the bed. So one day, she took the Bible out and started reading from Ezekiel 36, 26. And it states, a new heart also will I give you and a new spirit will I put it within you, and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. Quietly on the floor that night, she accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior. And today she has the ministry out of Birmingham called Angel Ministry. You probably heard of Mary K. Beard. In October 2005, there was a big earthquake in Pakistan. And there were 73,000 people that lost their lives. And the first responders to most disasters is the, uh, the church. And we distribute like uh, scriptures at this uh, earthquake. And one of the clergymen, there, a spiritual leader there, he wanted to find out about this Jesus that he heard so much about. So one of the Gideons there decided to tell him about Jesus, and he accepted Jesus as his Lord and Savior. And so he carried, uh, carried his Bible back to his village, and his whole family accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior. So two weeks later, after he accepted Jesus, being a Muslim or Islam, his whole village turned against him. And in these villages, they have wells where they get their water. So it's like a death penalty. They told him he couldn't get no more water. His family couldn't get no more water from that well. So they have these huts or places. They don't have brick floors or wooden floors. They had just dirt floors. So he just reached up and said, Jesus. And he started digging for water on this dirt. And he found water. And he was living water. And so in the community, the whole well dried up. So what do you think the village got their water from this village, from this man here in this house? So the whole village in Pakistan accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. A nurse named Elizabeth found herself deep and homeless, and she decided she would commit suicide, and she put a gun to her mouth. And out, out of the left eye, she looked and saw a white PWT, personal witness testament. And she accepted Jesus as her Lord and Savior, so she didn't commit suicide. Church, would you please pray for the Gideon ministry that we continue to distribute to God's world and bring men and women to the saving knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Pray that we have steady flow of funds to purchase the Bibles like the PWT, and it only costs like a dollar thirty-five cents. And the administrative cost for the Gideon comes from our dues. We have like three hundred thousand Gideons around the world, and we pay forty dollars a year for dues, and that's where the money comes from to take care of the administrative cost of the uh, Gideon. And so all other money that we collect from these Bibles goes out to find the lost souls in the world. 
Pray for the Gideon workers around the world for safe spiritual protection. We travel to different countries that do not allow Christianity in the country. It's a spiritual war on Christians in this world. Pray for the Gideon expression cards. We have some expression cards. You probably have them out there in the, in the lobby. And what I like to do a lot of times when you have memory cards, we send Bibles to different family members. And I leave a pack with the Pastor Turner here. Pastor Turner, Turner, thank you for the opportunity to share the Gideon ministry. With your prayers and support, this will have a great impact on the Gideon ministry. We are a partnership with the churches to bring the lost soul to the saving knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Congregation, thank you for your attention. It's been a privilege and a pleasure to participate in your service today. May God bless you and keep you. Thank you. And before I go, I'd like to give Pastor Turner a Bible you, just so you can keep in your uh, suit pocket. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, thank you, Al, very much, and thanks for the Bible. Al was sharing with me earlier that I believe it's every Monday he takes his lunch break and goes over to the base and is able to share testaments with uh, military inductees uh, on a weekly basis. So that's uh, another valuable ministry that uh, those scriptures are just going all over the world. You notice these in your these inserts in your bulletin. It gives descriptions of how you can be involved in placing scriptures, the Holy Bible, the, the Word of God, in people's hands, in the rooms of institutions, motels and so on, that end up in the hands of people, that ends up in the minds and hearts of people who end up in heaven. And so you can participate in this Bible-placing missional arm of churches all over the world, including our own, by making donations. And there are different ways to do it. You notice there, they're described. There is an envelope there where you could just place it directly in the mail, but we also will have ushers in the narthex following the service in the foyer at each exit available to receive any donations that you have. I know the Gideons like to keep it separate from the regular offering within a congregational worship service, but there will be uh, opportunities as you depart from the service uh, to be able to make donations to some of our ushers in the narthex as well as we, uh, we also have baskets at these down front uh, side side exits so thank you Al, for enabling us to participate with you in the placing of the word of god around the world responding to the word of pentecost sharing god's word around the world responding to the word to the the day of Pentecost, the word of Pentecost, is also contained in inviting Beverly Brown, our youth director, to come and stand with me here in the middle of the chancel rail as we invite up our college, or excuse me, our high school graduates. I'm already advancing you on through college. <laughs> our high school graduates, because these folks have participated in the ministry of the Holy Spirit of which we speak today. And, and through their educational endeavors, we want to honor and recognize them this morning. So Beverly, if you would meet me here at the chancel rail. Beverly is our youth director, as you know, here at Whitfield, and we, she's going to introduce our graduates here in just a moment, but I just want to give her a hand for all the work she does with our youth as well. Well, we finally made it. There's been some times in the last four years that I think probably everybody's had some uh, concern some thoughts about what's going to happen and were they going to make it through. Um, but, the, but the last four years has actually been a joy. Um, 
I, I do want to introduce each one of them uh, to you. And Reggie is going to be giving them a gift that, um, while I'm talking, that um, is from uh, me, it's from the church, it's from the preacher, it's from the WMU. It took a lot. We put it all together to get them this. Um, but first, I'd like to say I started with these guys four years ago. Um, at the time, actually, um, I started with Savannah, James, and Rachel. And James asked me one day in our youth meeting, do you think there's ever going to be another guy? And I said, <laughs> I said, well, we'll have to pray about that. So I prayed, you know, several weeks went by and I had prayed and um, Jacob and Will, who's not here today, he had to work at IHOP, uh, but they showed up at confirmation for Rachel and James. From then, uh, Jacob invited his friends, Justin Cornelius, to come too, and it's been a, uh, a, a good relationship ever since. Um, first of all, we'll start with Cornelius over here. Um, Cornelius Pugh graduated from Lee High School yesterday, and um, Cornelius is our uh, thinker. He's also our uh, out of the box, well, wait a minute, maybe, maybe it could be this way, or maybe it could be that way. He is also our number one dancer. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you've heard about it or not, but these guys can dance. And the preacher actually can dance too. Um, <laughs> so, um, and Cornelius, um, I'm proud of you, and you have done an amazing job, and I know that God is gonna be with you um, in anything that you do. Justin Smith, oh my goodness. What can we say about Justin? We can say a lot about Justin. But Mr. Justin is what I like to think of as Mr. Personality. He um, can incite happiness in the group, joy, uh, get everybody going, get everybody laughing. And he really is a uh, deep down just good, good guy. And I'm so blessed to have known him and for him to have been brought to our group. And I know that God is going to bless him in everything that he does. Also, he graduated from Lee High School yesterday. Um, at 3 o'clock. I'm glad there were two of them at one place because I was chasing them around. Last but not least, of course, Will is not here, and Will, I would say, is our um, quiet, silent, but deadly sometimes um, youth, and he graduated yesterday from Jeff Davis at 11 o'clock. And last but not least, let's move over to Jacob. Jacob Allen, El Presidente. Jacob has been our youth president since just about the day we drafted him into youth. Um, he has done a great job of keeping people interested. He's done devotions. He's done things that were a lot outside his box. Um, a lot of times, it's not easy to be the teenager that stands up and says, it, it's about God, it's about Jesus, um, it's, it's about doing what's right. And Jacob has done that, and he has led these, these guys and the youth that we have today um, in setting such a good example. And the best example, I shared this with the preacher we talked about the other day was, um, all of these guys, when they turned 16, and will, um, then had their driver's license. Um, at every youth conference I'd been to or ministry training event, I was told that, well, you better get them while they're young because once they get their driver's license, they're out of there. And you're not gonna see them, they're gonna go find something fun to do, some trouble to get into. Well, I was so proud that each and every one of these guys, the next week after they got their driver's license, they drove to church. And and I think that's a great testimony to them and the work that God's done in their life. And not only that, they've been going around picking up everybody else in the youth group and taking them home. So I, 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 the gift that they have, they, um, they, you can open them. Um, the gift that they have are uh, very sturdy and very healthy crosses of different types. They're, um, I don't want them to think that when they leave Whitfield, um, they're leaving anything behind. I want them to take something with them, and I want them to, this cross to remind them that they're part of, they're still part of Whitfield. They will always be part of Whitfield. They're part of Christ's family because we are all Christians, and we're all part of the same family. And I want this to remind them of that and also to remind them of uh, whose they belong to, which is God. And um, I just want to say thanks to Reggie and Alex for helping out with these guys um, during the last four years.
Thank you so much, Beverly. Now, you see we have another preacher on staff. Thank you, Beverly. If I might, um, and uh, so much wonderful applause, I didn't get to whisper to you to stay put for a minute, but let me have a closing prayer for, or, or a, a prayer uh, for our graduates. God of truth and knowledge, by your wisdom we are taught the way and the truth. Bless these graduates as they now finish this course of study. We thank you for those who taught and worked beside them and all who supported them along the way. Walk with them, we pray, as they leave and move forward in life. Take away their anxiety, any that they may have, any confusion of purpose. Strengthen in them their many talents and skills. Instill in them, we pray, a confidence in the future that you plan, where energies may be gathered up and used for the good of all people, for the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. We continue responding to the Word of God in these ways and in other ways, and we are particularly mindful that God has offered Himself for us, and we know that our response is that we offer ourselves anew and afresh back to Him, all of our lives, all of who we are, and we demonstrate the same by the giving of His tithes and our offerings. We invite our ushers to come forward as we receive our morning offering. 